This is Christopher with Johnsy.net. Cincinnati hasn't had a comic book convention in decades. All that changed was Cincinnati Comic Expo. Why does Cincinnati need a comic book convention? Hall of Justice, anyone? Although the final numbers aren't in yet, it suddenly looks like the Comic Expo was a huge success for vendors, for attendees, and for guests alike. I spoke with the man behind this project to find out how this even happened. I've been thinking about it for a long time. This is going back about seven years. Why doesn't Cincinnati have a show? There's a lot of cities in this region, Dayton, uh, Columbus, uh, Louisville, Lexington have shows. Cincinnati hasn't had a comic book event since 1999, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. um, I've been wanting to put one on, and I think I felt like the time was right, that people were just, just wanting something in Cincinnati. You could kind of feel it, and I just took the ball and ran with it. I didn't, from uh, the crowd that you've gotten uh, for being a first year and uh, the crowd you've gotten that I saw today, you did a fantastic job. You were right on the money that you know people were asking for this and have been really happy to come out to your do your expo. But what was the uh, what was the biggest challenge, the biggest hurdles for uh, bringing this to Cincinnati? Well, the biggest challenge is that there's always been a, a, an attitude that Cincinnati can't have a comic book event. Um, I don't know if it was a lot of outsider opinions, meaning um, other cities, you know, because Cincinnati hasn't had one in such a long time, maybe the stigma in their head was, that, well, they can't have a show because they haven't had a show. So I had to overcome a lot of people's opinions, and that meant pounding the pavement, going to all the local shops, getting their support, bringing them on board, letting them know that I'm there for them. This show is to get people back into their stores, get people excited about comics in our area, bring all the artists and the talent in this region together for one day, make new contacts, make relationships. I would say well over half our, sh our show is local talent. Now, we did bring in some featured guests from, you know, Russ Heath from California, Murphy Anderson from New York, New Jersey, Michael Uslan from New Jersey, Alan Bellman from Florida. So we do bring in the guests that you normally wouldn't see in the Midwest region. One of the special guests to the expo was Michael Uslan, the executive producer of the Batman film franchise and comic book historian. There's obviously a lot of comic book movies uh, that have come out or are coming out, um, and a lot of them have gone back to really kind of older title comics, the ones that started, you know, 40, 50 years ago. Um, and comics have certainly changed a lot in that time. What do you think about, um, will we see, say, you know, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, will we see comic titles that are out there today, you think, turned into movies? Definitely. I think that one of the real possibilities is that in those decades to come, today's version of what for my generation and maybe your generation growing up were Spider-Man and Batman and Superman and X-Men, it's going to be manga and anime. Yeah. And I think there's going to be a huge, huge um, turn to that in the decades to come as the kids who are now into manga I mean, go to a Borders or a Barnes and Noble after school one day you'll see kids spread out all over mostly females and the comic book industry has largely been ignoring their female audience and these girls have been gravitating to manga and they're going to grow up with that as their base yeah it's going to be an interesting uh, next 50 years I think what do you think of the comics I mean obviously the artwork and what goes on in the comics has changed a lot uh, it's gone less about the Obviously, it's gone. You see a lot more uh, superheroines, females in comics. It's not just the uh, the brooding or the you know the the, the handsome man. And they've also gotten kind of a lot sexier, and at least some uh, some books have. Uh, do you think that's is that just the way it's it is and the way it was going to be, or do you like that? Uh, well, I think if you look at the entire history of comics, comics have tended to cater to pubescent male fantasy. <laughs> and uh, it's probably one of the reasons in more recent years uh, female audiences have been ignored or alienated. And uh, um, it's great to see graphic novels, and it's great to see the independent press, the alternative press, um, doing books with female protagonists who are not something that stepped out of a Playboy magazine. And um, giving female audiences their own heroines, their own protagonists, I think it's wonderful and it's a strength of, of manga, but it's also a strength in a lot of the graphic novels coming out today that are not simply spandex superheroes. Cincinnati not only has architectural ties to comic books and superheroes, they also have some great independent publishers and artists. One example is Old World Comics, operating out of Louisville, Kentucky. 
Old World Comics is a new publishing, uh, publisher in-house with the comic world, right? Yes, yeah. Old World Comics started about a year ago. Um, I was doing my series, The Adventures of Nightclaw and Prowler, for a couple of years. And then Todd Goodman, who is a good friend of mine um, from way back when, he used to own his own comic book store that I used to frequent. Mm -hmm. um, he just got really jazzed seeing... The, my ability to get these comics out through a printer online, you know, and he's a writer, and he's just like, man, I, I got to do this. It's, it's just my life passion to be able to do this. So he found some artists, and he started his own, you know, several series. He started um, uh, The Powers That Be, which is a satirical take on superheroes. Uh, his newest comic is um, The Book on Me, which is like a um, slice of life humorous take on four regular people who come together to make their own comic book. Sort of a sort of live story there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I saw what he was doing, and I loved the company Old World Comics because to me it summed up what I was trying to do with Nightclaw and Prowler, which is to do the comics I read back in the 80s, which is fun, adventurous comic books. Not yep. grim, not gritty. It's for all ages, for kids and adults. And so I just asked him, I said, I'm about to come out with my fourth issue. Can I just move it under Old World Comics? Can, we just, can I just join up with you? And he's just like, oh, man, that would be awesome. And so we're like a comic book family now. It's just, it, it, it's, and to me, that's what that's the fun of it. You know, if you, it's, it's okay if you do it by yourself, but, you know, if you can do it with someone that you admire and is a friend, you know, it just makes it all the more better. I mean, it's just wonderful. Okay, excellent. Now, uh, you located here in Cincinnati? No, actually, um, we're both from Kentucky. Um, I'm located in Louisville. He's located in Banner, Kentucky, which is eastern Kentucky. So, um, I, again, I was raised in eastern Kentucky, so I knew him from way back when. Um, the reason we came to the Cincinnati Comic Expo, and it's very important for me to come to this expo, is because I went to school at Northern Kentucky University. When I first came here, it was like 1993, they had a Star Trek convention. I've right. never been to one before. So I go to the Star Trek convention, and all this merchandise, you know, all these you know, people and all this stuff. I just like, oh, man, this is so cool, so cool. Never had anything after that. <laughs> That's right. No, since it's been a dirt, kind of, just this vast desert of conventions. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what's up with that? I mean, it's, it's Cincinnati, you know. So the rest of my um, college life was kind of boring, you know. And so I'm like, <laughs> then I moved to Louisville. I get married, you know, have a couple of kids. And then I hear, once I'm into the comic books, I hear about this new comic convention that's coming up. And I'm just like, and it's specifically Cincinnati, Cincinnati Comic Expo. And I'm like, got to do it. We got to be a part of this. And Todd was on board. You know, he really wanted to, to start doing the shows. So it was just very important to support, I believe, you know, the more venues like this to come to Cincinnati and to be a part of this. We well, have it on good authority that there's a lot more to come next year at Cincinnati Comic Expo. Johnja.net will keep you informed with any news that comes along. Until then, go out and buy some comics.